everyone, this is Sam back for another one of my mystery videos. If you're new here, welcome. I do mystery videos every Sunday and then I do other types of videos on Wednesdays. That's like beauty, fashion, lifestyle, uni, anything like that. I do those on Wednesdays. So if you enjoy these sort of mystery videos, then definitely subscribe because I do these weekly. So today I'm going to be talking about Virginia Carpenter, a young woman who disappeared in 1948. It's a very strange disappearance case and um, when I came across it, I just thought I would share it. It would be a good one to share on this channel so yes uh, if you are interested in hearing about Virginia Carpenter's disappearance then keep on watching. So Virginia Carpenter who has now actually been missing for around 69 years which is insane to me that someone's abductor, killer, you know something along these lines, the disappearance of a woman, she could go disappearing for 69 years with absolutely no lead. She was a 21 year old woman at the time of her disappearance and she was described by her friends very highly, lots of people, friends and family, so she was beautiful, she was really bubbly, she was just, sorry, she was happy, she was just a genuinely all round lovely person and this was described and she was described as this by so many people. So just prior to her disappearance she had recently enrolled in Texas State College for Women. This had a campus location in Denton. This happened quite soon before her disappearance in 1948. On June the 1st 1948 she left her home in Texarkana, Texas and she jumped on a train to Denton to go to her campus for the first day of starting college. She'd been there to start her summer classes, obviously it was June, so when she got off the train and arrived on campus she jumped in a taxi to take her just from the outskirts of the campus to her accommodation. So she was living in student housing in a place called Bracken Brackenridge Hall, so she jumped in a taxi to get there. The taxi driver is actually a pretty important person in this case, so his name is mentioned quite a bit. So the cab was driven by Edgar Ray Jack Zachary. So according to his account, he dropped her off outside of the hall just at the entrance of the student housing at around 9.30 p.m. He said that one of the first things he noticed when he dropped her off were there were two men sat in a convertible just outside the accommodation and they were calling to her when she was out of the car. And he said that he heard Virginia call back to them, well, what are you doing, what are y'all doing over here? So this is the initial hint that suggests that she had known them, these two strange men, prior to this moment. According to Zachary, he said that one of Virginia's trunks hadn't arrived yet, it was to arrive the following morning. So she had asked him to collect it and deliver it the following morning, just deliver it to the front of, uh, of her housing, and she paid him a dollar to do so in advance. And then he said that she told her that she was okay with carrying the trunks she did have in his cab because the two men sat in the convertible outside would help her carry them in. And he also said that she told him that she knew these two men and um, he said that as they were driving, as he drove away from dropping her off, she continues just to stand and talk to these two men. This was the last reported sighting of Virginia Carpenter just talking to these two men um, according to Zachary, the cab driver but it is later found out that she never actually checked into her dorm, her student housing. So the next morning, Zachary picked up the trunk that he'd been told to, and he dropped it off outside of her accommodation building, and it continued to stay there unopened, so she hadn't checked in, and um, he just drove back home. Still at this point, the identities of the two men that were helping Virginia is still unknown, no one knows who they are. Zachary gave a loose description of these two men, so he said, that uh, one was tall and the other was short and stocky and they were in a cream coloured car. So obviously this isn't too specific so it's not particularly helpful, it's quite vague, but this was the only information received because he was the only person that saw these two men apart from Virginia. So three days later, on June the 4th, 1948, Virginia's boyfriend by the name of Ken Kenny Branham contacted uh, Virginia's mother because he hadn't been able to get hold of her for the past few days. From there, Virginia's mother contacted the Texas State College for Women's Security Department and found out that she had never checked in on campus. She hadn't checked in to her dorm, her class as anything so this was obviously when a huge red flag alerted them that she was missing. So then on the next day June the 5th 1948 when they still hadn't heard from her Virginia's mother decided to call the Denton police because obviously that was where the college's campus was located and reported her as missing. So all the information that there is on Virginia Carpenter's disappearance what actually happened to her according to um, the cab driver during the investigation, the police obviously initially focused on two main suspects because they didn't have any 
a form of identification for the two strangers that were outside of our accommodation. The first one they focused on was the boyfriend. Obviously it is quite typical um, when people go missing they do often check their significant other. So um, Kenny, the boyfriend, passed polygraph tests. He was asked to take multiple polygraph tests and he passed them all and he during the investigation he just completely insisted that she had no reason to run away so that she must obviously be missing. He said she had no exes, like no jealous exes, no trouble with anyone, they weren't having any issues, she didn't have any family issues so there was absolutely no reason that he could think of to, for her to run away of her own choice. And also it is noted that he first pointed out to her mother that she was missing, that he believed she was missing so it is unlikely that he's involved because he wouldn't have alerted people of her missing because I don't think people would have realised quite so soon if he had something to do with it, he wouldn't, yeah, if you get what I mean. Both Kenny and Virginia's mother absolutely hands down swore that she was so looking forward to starting college and she had been looking forward to this for all summer, she'd been planning it, she had worked really hard for it and they had no reason to believe that she used it as an excuse to like, you know, run away or anything. So they were both adamant that she had been taken against her will. So the next person they focused on in the investigation was the taxi driver, Zachary. In the initial investigation in 1948, both Zachary and his wife swore that Zachary, the driver, had been home by 10 p.m. that day and then he went the next morning to drop off her trunk. However, in 1957, when they did follow-up investigations, when they continued the investigation, the story changed. His wife, who was becoming his ex-wife, claimed that she'd lied the first time around in 1948, and he hadn't actually returned home at 10pm. In fact, he'd returned home around 2am, 3am. She hadn't given any further reason as to why she lied. Um, that's all the information I could find. And then, obviously, they went on to question Zachary, and he passed multiple polygraph tests that he'd taken and then before they could pretty, like find out the truth he passed away in 1984. The weeks following Virginia Carpenter's disappearance there were a number of sightings of her around the country so they had there were sightings that came in from South Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, there were loads um, because she was quite um, her face had become quite public because obviously a young woman was missing, she was very very attractive, very beautiful, so I think she had quite a notable face. There was one sighting in particular that was followed up with kind of high hopes and it came from a ticket agent in Dequeen, Arkansas. This ticket agent claimed that on June the 11th, 1948, a young woman had gotten off a bus from Texarkana and she found a seat in the lobby of the bus terminal. He said that she matched Virginia's description like nearly exactly so he was sure it was her and he said she seemed nervous, she was pacing about, she was biting her lips, she was looking around and she even asked him about um, local hostels in the area if there were anything sort of close nearby. Then he said around 10 minutes later a man in his mid-twenties with light brown hair approached her and they walked off together. And then not long after seeing these two leave the bus terminal together the ticket agent said that he received a phone call from a woman. This woman was asking if a Miss Virginia Carpenter was at the bus terminal. So this seems like a pretty solid sighting of Virginia however um, there is no way of them proving whether this sighting was real or not so past this they couldn't really do much with it and the case went cold. And then because no new evidence arised they couldn't really do anything else with the investigation. In 1955 she was declared as legally dead. There were a few new leads over the years, there was nothing super substantial but then in 1998 police actually received a tip of a man in his 70s. This man claimed he knew who killed Virginia Carpenter and where she was buried. He claimed that two men had raped and killed her and then dumped her body in a dam at a stock tank. He told them the specific location of where the where he knew the body had been buried um, but when police searched it they couldn't find anything, there was no remains, no evidence of her ever being there so this was ruled out. And the two men that he named as the people who had raped and killed Virginia Carpenter had passed away by the time he made this tip so they couldn't really do much obviously and the names were never released to the public and these were the only leads they had so that was pretty much the end of the case and now 69 years later they still have no clue about what actually happened to Virginia Carpenter. So that is everything I have to talk about about the case of Virginia Carpenter and her disappearance. Um, I know it's not a particularly long one usually I have a lot longer videos I talk a lot more but I couldn't help but do this case because I just found it so fascinating and so upsetting and heartbreaking that this young, well-loved woman could 
disappear with absolutely no trace, no evidence, and still nearly 70 years later, no one has any idea where she is. And I just think that's really, really sad and really quite heartbreaking. So I just wanted to share the case and discuss it with you. So um, if you guys have ever heard of this case and you know heard of any other theories, then definitely leave them down below. Um, open up a discussion as per always and also leave me any other cases you would like me to cover in future week's videos. So I hope you guys found this interesting and I will see you guys on Wednesday for another video. Bye!